Today, uh, December 4th, is the anniversary of the murder of Fred Hampton. That has nothing to do with Syria, but anytime right. I go anywhere, uh, or I'm speaking with a group on December 4th, I feel it's important to make note of that. Uh, the loss of a, a great leader of the Black Panther Party uh, in Chicago, and a victim of something called the counterintelligence program. And, um, you know, I think that we should, if you're not familiar with that, it was an FBI program uh, that helped to destroy many organizations. And with the election of Donald Trump, I think that we should anticipate that something very similar will reemerge. And so we, need, we should learn the lessons of COINTELPRO and pay homage to the memory of Fred Hampton. Um, you know, frequently when African Americans speak out you know, about anything other than race, or if we're speaking about foreign policy, anything other than Africa, we are instructed by the mainstream that we should keep our mouths shut or speak only about those things that we supposedly know something about. Um, and, and so what's implied there is that we can only uh, speak on things relative to us directly, that is black folks, uh, race or whatever. However, there is a long tradition in the United States of something that's called black internationalism. And what this refers to is that there's a current within black America that has always been highly conscious of global issues and the importance of global solidarity. And I actually wanted to start there um, and, and take you through a, a, a brief look at this before getting into this whole question of Syria. Because it's really important that we understand, and I'm addressing this particularly to black folks in the room, that we understand that we have as much right to speak about this as we have about anything. Um, and we should not get pigeonholed into only speaking about uh, racial discrimination in the United States or things along those lines. Amen. You know, it's interesting when you look at history. In the 1840s and 50s, there was something called the Negro Convention Movement. And these would be conferences that were held in the so-called free states uh, that, that brought together the representatives of black America where they discussed strategy, they discussed um, uh, platform, positions that needed to be taken. And when you look at the historical record, one of the things that you find there, which I found fascinating, is that at, I believe, every gathering there was a resolution passed supporting freedom for Ireland. Now, the last time I checked, there's very few black folks in Ireland, and there was certainly even fewer in the 1840s and 1850s. Yet there was something about the Irish struggle for national liberation against the British that resonated among black freedom fighters even in the 1840s and 1850s. And it's interesting to note that the issue of Ireland keeps coming up within black America, and we'll get to that. Um, another focal point for black Americans was Haiti. Haiti was blockaded by the United States from the moment that it was uh, uh, granted independence in 1803 until Abraham Lincoln uh, granted recognition in, I believe, 1862. But it was blockaded. And after that, the United States never ceased interfering in the internal affairs of Haiti including an invasion and occupation that lasted from 1915 to 1934. African Americans regularly spoke out on the situation in Haiti, spoke out against the occupation, calling for the independence of Haiti, and this was an ongoing thing. In the late teens, Marcus Garvey uh, not only spoke out on the condition facing uh, people of African descent, but also spoke out on Ireland, in fact, he also spoke out on the Russian Revolution and expressed his, uh, uh, his support and, and, uh, and, and uh, best wishes for the Russian Revolution. Uh, very few history books ever discussed that. In 1935, when the Italians invaded Ethiopia, 
as a way of trying to uh, start their new empire, African Americans were very outspoken on this invasion. An invasion, by the way, where the Italians used poison gas against the Ethiopians in order to subjugate them. And so African American activists in communities around the country spoke out on Ethiopia. Um, a year later, the, uh, when the Spanish Civil War erupted, African American activists, including the well known Paul Robeson, were among the most outspoken against this fascist uprising that took place. And there were African Americans who volunteered to go to Spain to fight on behalf of the Spanish Republic in something that was called the International Brigades. And the, the US contingent was the Abraham Lincoln Brigade. After World War II, there was a, a lot of involvement by African Americans in the immediate aftermath of the war in supporting anti-colonial movements. Very famous people like W.E.B. Du Bois and Paul Robeson uh, were outspoken and led something called the Council on African Affairs that not only spoke out on the colonization of Africa, but also spoke out on the condition of India and calling for the independence of the Indian subcontinent. Uh, and I found that quite fascinating, that they did not restrict themselves to Africa or the Caribbean. Of course, during the uh, entire period of the US aggression against Vietnam, African Americans were outspoken. Malcolm X was one of the earliest people to come out speaking against the, uh, the US uh, aggression against Vietnam. Of course, that was followed by Martin Luther King. And it's interesting to note that when King spoke out against the Vietnam, War, many of his liberal allies turned on him. And in the press, I believe it was the Boston Globe, that ran an editorial condemning him for speaking out allegedly about something he knew nothing about. Um, there were other groups that spoke out on, on Vietnam, including the Black Panther Party and others. And then in 1967, the uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee spoke out uh, in support of the Arabs when the uh, Arab-Israeli war took place and there was a, a Arab territory that was occupied, the Palestinian territory. And then to return to the issue of Ireland, uh, there were constant delegations and uh, the, the state representative and former mayor candidate Mel King in Boston led a delegation, it was called the Black and Green Delegation, that went to Ireland and and expressed his solidarity with the Irish Catholics against the British and calling for the unification of Ireland. So the whole point here is that black internationalism is not new. We should be speaking out about any of these issues of international injustice, and we should absolutely be speaking out about Syria. 